Coach, it is a blackout, and Florida Atlantic knows when they go on the road, they're going to get everybody's best shot. And this UAB team is a good team, and this program is a proud program. They've had a lot of success, and Andy Kennedy has been a part of most of that. You ready to go? Ready to go, partner. Let's get this. Blazers in the black, the Owls wearing the cream, and the tip is won by Vlad Golden. So Brian Greenlee getting the start at the point. He will run the show for the Owls. He will launch off the tip. You know, Florida Lance had some different lineups, but I look for them to really try to get the ball inside the Golden. Look at the starting five for UAB. Offensive rebound there as Ephraim Butter Johnson tracks it down. When you got a nickname like Butter, <laughs> I want to see something. He is a big time scorer. There's Alejandro Vasquez. He's got his pull-up mid-range. Nothing but oxygen. It stays alive. Here's Butta Johnson. A little too strong. Tipped around. And the Owls come away with it. Greenlee up ahead to the big man. Golden. I look for them to try to get the ball in the goal in just about every possession. He walked. And an early turnover as Elijah Martin couldn't handle it. Yeah. A lot of times, with much big-time games these two teams have played in, when you face each other, there's a little nerve that are working there. I really look for games to be the catalyst right now. Uh, they like to go to Butter Johnson for the jump shots, or Vasquez is kind of the wild card because he likes to drive it off a lot of the action, which is they're running right now, which is Iverson. Good hounding D by Nick Boyd to poke it away. Opening minute of play here in Birmingham. This is Vasquez baseline, that, first bucket for UAB. That's what he does. Vasquez is that wild card now. He can shoot it, but he also likes to drive it. So you're going to hear me talk a lot about Iverson. Iverson is where two post guys are at the elbow, and they run either Vasquez or Johnson off of both of them to try to get the ball to him on the wing so they can attack. So Greenlee had to adjust his shoe. That was the momentary pause in action. So UAB with a 2 nothing start. Martin so dangerous off the bounce and he's got the Owls on the board When Martin starts to attack and has that look in his eye this Florida Atlantic team from the beginning is a different type of team I think Martin is the heart and soul of this team Back to our cut here's Vasquez what a time by J.D. and Davis a great pass that time and again I tell you, they use Vasquez in a lot of different ways to take advantage of what they want to do offensively. Coach, you said it. Vasquez is the wild card and some early energy for the Blazers. Well, what Andy Kennedy is doing offensively is he's raising his sets up high so it gives them back, back door action to, uh, against the pressure of Florida Atlanta. Here's John L. Davis, the leading scorer. He'll be in the pick and roll with Golden at seven foot one. Trying to get position on the block. Now double team, no call. He got raked in the face. Yeah. They got to go to Golden. I mean, he's the guy that gives them an advantage. As a coach, you look for where do I have an advantage? Davis is good, but he's no match physically for Golden in that low post. Davis, the big man, dumping it down low, and he turned it over. See, Golden's not going to go play Davis out there. Offensive rebound by Martin, but it's taken right back by Axel Lindenborg. Lindenborg is a, a young man that everybody's really high on. His ability to play physical in this ballgame is going to really matter. You better stop ball, because John L. Davis will make you pay. We talked earlier about the transition of FAU. They really do a good job in the break situation. They feed each other well. Who's going to take care of the basketball tonight? Vasquez thought about it, now gives it up to Gaines. Gaines will go one-on-one -on -one against Boyd. In trouble, kick out, two on the shot clock. I don't think they see it. They do not. Shot clock violation. 
UAB is not very effective when they are trying to go ISO. They are much more effective than when they run sets and they come off the sets and create driving lanes then for Gaines and Vasquez and shooting opportunities for Johnson. So the third turnover already in this game by UAB. Greenlee cut off. They'll use the screen by his big man. They try to find Blyden the post. Nothing doing. Ten on the shot clock for Davis. Double team. Pull up jumper. In and out. But Martin on the offensive glass with the putback. That's what he does. He comes with the fire. He creates more points that are not called for in sets. And when I talk about he's the energy guy, when he plays like that, it just takes this FAU team to another level. Partner, we're in for a good one tonight. Oh, you can already tell from the opening tip. Vasquez, a little excited. And now Nick Boyd looks to run the show. Pick and roll. Golden goes to the deck. D a little too tight. No, excuse me. They called an offensive foul on Brian Greenlee. Davis got the scoring going for the Owls. He does. He does what he does. Best. Playing excellent. You know, it's been fascinating here in the American this season. The top dogs who we thought coming into the year have just kind of beaten up on each other. And now you have South Florida and Charlotte who have snuck up on everyone. They found a way to play, John, that is comfortable and they can do it both away and at home. So a slow start. Oh, lower in the shoulder. An offensive foul on Lindenborg. This is going to be interesting how Florida Atlantic is going to guard London board, board because he has versatile. He, he can put the ball on the floor. He can post. He can knock down three. They see him putting it down, but they're able to defend him with one of their perimeter players and take away his penetration. Each team with eight possessions. Florida Atlantic, three turnovers. Make that four turnovers. And UAB also with four turnovers. Coach, why such a sloppy start to this one? The intensity of the game. I think both teams have been well scouted. And so trying to do what you normally do is not going to be there at the start. You have to, as players, make adjustments on how they're playing you tonight. This is also the second time they're meeting this season with Florida Atlantic taking the first one in January. And Vasquez is again, he is tough when he's attacking the basket. He will not, he will shoot the three, but he really likes to attack. Owls trying to work the inside outside game. This is Jalen Gaffney now off the bench. A lot of times before Atlantic goes with this lineup with the with three ball handlers, they pick which one they feel has the better advantage offensively. On the floor, <laughs> on the rebound, Martin was just mugged. It's Johnson said, I've seen these films. I've seen you crash the glass. Not on me. I am not going to look at that in the film room. And he did. He almost tackled him. He's a little football play here, coach. But that's how. But that's what Martin brings. I mean, his energy level, his aggressiveness. I mean, the bigger the moment, the harder he plays. Davis off the bounce, gets the bucket plus the foul. This is the part of Florida Atlantic's game right now that they go to. They really are looking to attack the basket. You know, we know him as a three-point shooting team, but Davis is putting his head down. He's attacking. Martin is putting his head down. He's attacking. There you see him get hacked on the arm. But when they get in this attack mode with these three, with the four guards that they have on the floor, I'm telling you, John, it's a tough matchup for other teams to be able to handle. So John L. Davis completes a three-point play. Javian Davis for UAB just committed his second foul, so he'll have to go to the bench. As Christian Coleman, the junior, will come into the game for the Blazers. A 9-4 start here for Florida Atlantic. So Florida Atlantic is basically going without a post guy. Trey Carroll into the game. Here's Coleman, his first shot. 
A 7-0 run here by Florida Atlantic. Martin, little in and out dribble. And it's going to be a 5-on-4 breakout for UAB. The dump off to Gaines, and now he wants to reset the offense. Getting away with the hook is Lindeborg. And he'll be fouled on the follow. Lindeborg did a really good job posting up and following up. But right now, when you look at Florida Atlantic, they basically have four guards on the floor. And they're really looking to attack the rim. Which makes it hard for who's going to match up with Lindeborg because he is a really good post player. You know, Dusty May is really smart because he changes the flow of the game without you really paying a lot of attention, and he does it subtly by his substitutions. You know, you take Golden out, so now all of a sudden you're not trying to post, you're trying to drive. You put Golden in, then you post. You come in with Carroll, you can press a little bit, you can space the floor. He does a lot of subtle little things with his lineup that affects and changes the game. Tony, Tony entered his game for the first time for UAB. You were waiting to say that. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh, Lendeborg hits them both at the free throw line. Neither team has knocked down a three today. Both 0 for 3. It's been the hounding D on both sides. Now, how about a little zone action from the Blazers? Yeah. Handy Kennedy changes defenses as well as anybody. You ought to see a lot of that before this game goes. Strong rebound ripped down by Eric Gaines. And there's Coleman. Off the mark, rebound goes to Carroll. Weatherspoon in transition. Both teams slow shooting to start this one as Boyd with the left no good. Carroll his tip out as Weatherspoon resets. Andy Kennedy cannot be happy with his defensive rebounding right now. They clear the floor for Boyd. Shot clock under 10. Martin is open. He'll knock down the first three of the ball game for either team. They worked on that and shoot around today. The spacing of one guy driving, the other guy creating space and catch and shoot. So good start for Elijah Martin. Leads all scores with seven. I'm surprised right now that UAB is not running more sets. There's Martin defensively and he got caught in the air. Jump ball. It's Boyd winning the 50-50 one, but it's swatted by Gaines. The crowd trying to get into it here in Birmingham. Gaines out of control, but they call the block on Carroll. That'll be his second. A timeout on the floor. Elijah Martin, he's been everywhere. He has been, and in transition, he's lethal. There you see him knocking down a three. To Come out. As the 20th ranked team in the country, the Florida Atlantic Owls taking on UAB alongside the coach, Perry Clark. I'm John Triffin. A slow shooting start for both teams as the defenses have been dominant early on as Eric Gaines to the line, making his first free throw. Coach, Florida Atlantic has never won in this building. 0-7 all time and a huge crowd. It is a blackout here at Bartow Arena. Well, they're certainly ready for FAU coming in here, but coaches don't ever like to hear where they've never won, and this Florida Atlantic team is playing well right now. Dusty May in his sixth season at the helm, coming off a Final Four appearance. He said the biggest challenge is how do you handle success? And he said, I feel like this team has handled it as well as we could. He said even the way they treat people on campus, it has changed us for the better. And that's because Dusty's so humble. And with your head coach being that way, it's easy to pick those traits up. Weatherspoon picks up his dribble. Pounding D by the Blazers. This is what they're known for. Three on the shot clock. Someone's got to get it up. Davis sees it. But it also.
offensive rebound. Greenlee, he'll launch a good possession for the Owls, ending in a three. But this lineup that FAU is in is basically what I call their drive lineup. They have Golden on the floor, but they've got four other guys that really look to attack the rim with good spacing. And they're not trying to necessarily utilize the post area. This is the second matchup this season. Florida Atlantic won the first time at home. As inside, Yaxel Landborg. He's the junior college transfer. And he's been a factor. Kaffney, it's now back-to-back -back threes for Florida Atlantic. And this is what they do. Without question, they've got four ball handlers on the floor right now. And I asked Dusty early who initiates the offense. And they said whoever's got the hot hand or they feel has the weaker defender. They got Vlad Golden at seven foot one on the inside, but four guards on the perimeter. That's Daniel Ortiz missing. On the rebound, Landeborg up and under with a reverse, and then he barks at Golden to let them know. Landeborg is the young man that the coaches feel is such a great upside. He can do so many things. Ortiz the other way off the mark as Davis pulls it away. Both of these two teams really like the run. John L. Davis hasn't been able to get going early on. 0 for 2 from downtown. He's got five points. We played 10 minutes here in Birmingham. This is a monster matchup here in the American. Both teams in the top five in the standings. UAB on the block. They'll find Coleman. He's the energy guy off the bench. Finds a way to put that one in. But so what they're doing right now, they're playing through Lundberg. And he's delivering. He's making the right passes. Right now, he and Golden are mixing it up in the low post. Anytime Florida Atlantic goes on the road, they see the best crowds. Here at UAB, it's a blackout. And a little too active, a reach-in foul. Saturday starts with college game day crew at 11 a.m. And then our featured matchup, number four, Kansas. Host 13, Baylor in a Big 12 Sonic blockbuster. That's at 6 Eastern. I mean, we talk about how deep the American is. The Big 12, the best conference in the country, anyone can get beat on any court. It seems like every Saturday there's nail biters that are going on, and uh, it's just getting more interesting. I'll tell you, February is a crazy time of the year. So about six minutes into this half, UAB decided to go to the zone. They've stuck with it. And they get the miss. Here's Coleman on the breakout. Hello! Christian Coleman punches it, plus the foul. This UAB team loves to run. If you know anything about Andy Kennedy, you know offensively his guys like to shoot the basketball, and he gives them freedom to do that. Play some defense, get on out, and then finish with a flurry, especially at home. This UAB team plays to this crowd whenever they're here. This is a team who is undefeated at home so far this season. UAB wanting to protect home court. As Coleman looking for the three-point play. He can't convert. Florida Atlantic is going small right now. They basically have five guards on the floor. When they do that, they look to space you and drive you. Pick and roll, they find Davis open. 0 for 3 from downtown as Coleman rips it down. What a force he's been off the bench. Andy Kennedy told us earlier, he said, he's going to play. We don't know what he's going to do, but he's going to play. How amazing is Andy Kennedy? He just <laughs> uh -huh. keeps it real. One of the best coaches in the country, Andy Kennedy, in his fourth season at the helm. And a lot of his success is his ability to relate to people and his players. Off the bounce, what a tough finish. Ephraim Butter Johnson. An 8 nothing Blazers run. And they are taking it right to Florida Atlantic right now. I mean, they're attacking them off the drill. Tony Tony spins away from the D. And here comes Martin the other way. They'll find Boyd in transition. And Florida Atlantic just 3 for 13 from deep to start this game. With this lineup, three-point shooting is not normally what Florida Atlantic hangs his hat on. They hang their hat on driving the ball, getting to the foul line, getting three-point plays that way. Got a 
bounds. And it'll stay here with the Blazers. What an atmosphere here in Bartow Arena. The fans have showed up. They're looking for an upset. They're tied at 18. They're taking that away. So you have to, John, make game adjustments and see what's working in this Florida Land team has done that by mixing up their lineups. Now, early on, I said UAB had not lost at home. I apologize. That is incorrect. They just have not lost to Florida Atlantic here at home. Here's Gaines. A little step back three. They need that from Eric Gaines tonight. He is the point guard and a leader in every respect. Andy Kennedy said, offensively, I just don't know what I'm going to get from him night to night. Golden, he's got the clear out. Seven foot one. He'll be fouled on the wrist by Lendeborg. <laughs> Gaines is the guy that is really a leader for them offensively as far as calling the plays and getting them in their action. And they, he's stepping back, knocking that jump shot. And John, if he's going to shoot it like that, it's going to be a tough night for Florida Atlantic because he's going to get the other guys involved. So the first time these two played each other back in January, it was at FAU. As Golden knocks down the first, Eric Gaines was 0 for 6 from three-point land. And Andy Kennedy told us, he said, early on, we were running our sets. We were getting the shots we wanted. We just couldn't knock anything down. And then Florida Atlantic eventually pulled away from us. But Andy also said, I told him, keep shooting. Now he's going to tell him, you guys get better get a rebound. <laughs> Here's Davis. That is blocked out of bounds by Lendeborg. He's the junior college transfer. And Andy Kennedy said about Yaxo Lendeborg, he's got to realize now in the American, you got to bring the intensity every single game. Here's the block. Big time block coming over from the weak side. And if he's going to do that and shut down the middle, it's going to be very effective. Going up top as Golden throws it down. He might be the one of the few guys in this league that, I, that may be able to neutralize Golden. That's why it's going to be very interesting how this game plays out. Coleman thought about it. He takes the free throw jumper. That hesitation might have affected that shot. You see that rebound by Davis. I mean, that was a big man. That was a big boy rebound right there. Davis inside. Look at all the attention he gets, and it's stripped away. The Owls calling out defensive assignments here in transition. They've got a mismatch, though. Coleman on the block. They decide to get it away from him. Lendeborg will stretch the game. That's what he can do. Fans that are first time maybe seeing him, he can knock down the three besides drive it and post it. That's why so many scouts are so high on him. Watch Lindeborg right there stretch the defense, and he says, you can't leave me that open. Well, you see the difference when Lendeborg gets into double figures. In the losses, he has not made a three. When they win, he's almost 50%. So that's the key for this Blazers squad. John, the one reason why he fits and he's so good is that, that he doesn't disrupt them offensively. He plays off of the flow of their offense. If they're running their Iverson action, if they're running their pin down action, he can step and pop or he can roll to the basket. So he's very versatile with that. You know, whenever I used to coach in games like this, I would tell our team, there's going to come a point in time where it's going to be punch against punch and you just got to be able to respond. There's a rebound by Golden. Brian Greenlee, congratulations, just at the free throw line, now has over a thousand points in his college career. Here's Greenlee with the ball in his hands. We approach five minutes to play here in this first half. Weatherspoon rattles in a three from the wing. Right now, these two teams are settling in. They're understanding what they can run, what they can't run, what the other team is trying to take away, and now they're trying to take advantage of that. You know, if you just look at the stats, you'd say, oh, this is a poor shooting performance. 
but really, Coach, what you see, right, is the defense as the shooting is starting to get going. Eric Gaines knocking it down. Without question. They normally use Gaines coming off a horn screen action and trying to drive downhill. That's not there, so what is he doing? He's pulling up and he's knocking down threes. They are not pulling whistles inside. And they do call that one on the rebound, a foul on Golden. They're letting them play. There, you see coming across and Gaines knocking down that jump shot, that three. And a lot of times what they try to do is get Gaines going downhill. They're not doing that because they're not allowing you to get to the basket. So what does he do? He's pulling up and he's knocking the three down. Gaines, the junior guard from Lithonia, Georgia. Gives it up to Daniel Ortiz. Now it's Vasquez launching. A one-point lead. What a lead. What a move by Martin. The in and out avoids the shot blocker as Elijah Martin gives Florida Atlantic a one-point lead. I love his game. I tell you what, his energy level and when he gets focused and all of a sudden decides to attack, very few people can stop him. Vasquez probing. Might have shuffled the feet. He loves to score Vasquez. It was funny because Andy Kennedy said, I don't know what I'm going to get from games, but I know he's going to be very important in this game. Coleman with the block. But this is what you want in a game like this. You want your guards to see a shoot around today. He goes, you know what? We got to be ready for a high scoring affair. This has not been, but Andy Kennedy has been able to adjust on the fly. Both of these two teams have and figuring out, like I said, you've been well scouted. They're taking certain things away, so you got to see what you can take advantage of. Brendan Morient in off the bench, missed in close. And here's the Blazers coming the other way, down by one. Crossover by Gaines. Kick out to Ortiz. And Lorient will be fouled on the rebound. People that have watched UAB most of the year have seen them run their, their Iverson sets, uh, run their high horns at you. They've gone away from all of that stuff. And right now, they're just letting Gaines space the floor and create scoring opportunities. Andy Kennedy told us, when you get to start in February, and you still have control of your own destiny, you got to be excited about where you are here in the league. They're in fifth place right now at 6-3. and three. Florida Atlantic a half game back in second place at 8-1. and one. The American Conference is still up for grabs. Oh, this conference is really up for grabs, and so many teams are playing so well, and they're protecting home court, and I tell you, this month is going to be really, really exciting. And that guy right there, he can coach offense now. I mean... He's normally always had one guy that and he told you this when we talked him earlier. I put the ball in his hands and I let him do what he needs to do. Well, the surprise this season has been South Florida and Charlotte in first and third place. Everyone said Florida Atlantic. Everyone said Memphis. But now all of a sudden, we've got some parity here in the American this season. And normally what happens, you know, guys bring their teams together. They figure out what they have to do to be successful. And they change some things in their coaching style to make the team greater than the individual. All right, we approach three minutes to play in this first half. What's the key to closing out this half for UAB? No turnovers. Good shot selection, no turnovers. There's a good block by Weatherspoon. Well... That probably wasn't the best shot selection. No. Right now, Florida Atlantic's going to their spacing. Again, they've got four ball handlers on the floor. They're looking for dribble drives and trying to be able to attack the rim. John L. Davis had 30 points in their last meeting in January. He's sitting on five points here in this first half. Double teamed. He finds the open man. It's Weatherspoon, and Davis makes the correct play. Again, that's when you have trust in your player because that was not a set play. They just open the floor just like in the playgrounds and you just play, you get the open guy a shot. Timeout, UAB. We will step aside for a quick 30 seconds. We'll be back. 
game, and it also goes to the scouting report. They have scouted each other out of what they like to do, and now they've had to make some adjustments. So let's see what UAB does here coming out of their timeout. Here they come with the horns now with the double high post screen. Coleman, the big man, looking for some help. Shot clock's under 10. Ortiz, a wild shot, did not hit the rim. Someone's got to get it up. Instead, they're going to say did not have possession, so it's a shot clock violation. So John L. Davis, early on, just 2 of 7 from the floor, 0 for 3 from deep. But that's because they're loading the floor up for him right now. They're not giving him space to drive, and they're not giving him space to go one-on-one. -on -one. And so he's got to really kind of create everything he's getting right now. That's the scouting report. Dusty May said these last few games has been incredible. He said, we've seen teams just face guard Davis. <laughs> they're trying to do anything to just take him out of the game. There's Weatherspoon. Oh, my. Just bodies the defender. Get him. That's just playing hard. That's championship DNA. That's NCAA DNA. When things aren't going smooth, you just buckle down, play a little harder. An 8 nothing run for Florida Atlantic. Under 90 seconds here in this first half. Johnson catch and shoot. Bang, bang. That's what he does. He hasn't had many of those today because of Florida Atlantic defense, but that's what he does very well. Davis putting all the moves on the floor. He's got seven. Under a minute to play in this first half. Both teams shooting under 40%. Who's going to be able to execute to close out this first half? Gaines, nice pass inside. Coleman can't convert. Florida Atlantic, they've got numbers. Here's Davis attacking. Takes the body and the bucket. That's, that's the transition. That's the patience of Florida Atlantic. They're going to keep doing what they're doing, and all of a sudden there's a crack in the dam. We just talked about they're taking Davis away, and all of a sudden he steps up and gets two buckets. Doesn't it seem like all the great ones just have that switch? Yeah, and it's a relentlessness, but it's also great coaching and understanding that they are going to game plan against you. And if you just stay patient, we can take advantage when things break down. And that's what Davis has done. I love his on-court demeanor. All right, Coach, we call a lot of G League games together. You're in touch with a lot of NBA GMs and scouts. Is John L. Davis an NBA player? Yes. And the reason he is, I feel, because he can score the basketball. What we're seeing, the patience we're seeing, the relentlessness that we're seeing, and the different ways he's able to affect the game, yes, he can really score the ball. And in the NBA, you have to score. Oh. <laughs> We've seen games in the 140s, 150s. you got to put it up. John L. Davis now has 10 points. First player in double figures today. A three-second difference between shot and game clock. I tell you, I've really been impressed with Gaines' play here today, though. He's done a really good job of keeping his team connected. UAB trying to get a quality shot to end this first half. Gaines makes his moves with six on the shot clock. Hanging, banks it in. Five seconds to play. And a timeout, Florida Atlantic, to stop the clock at 4.7. And the women, they host Paige Beckers and number 11, UConn. It seems like every year, <laughs> South Carolina just dominates the women's game. Here we go, final seconds of this first half. Here goes Greenlee with one second, gets it off, and it rolls off the rim. But a strong finish for Florida Atlantic. They close out that first half up by seven, and a big half. Davis and Martin combined for 19, 20 points the rest of the team. And so winds up opening up the floor, and Florida Atlantic has been able to score freely through their transition.
largest lead of the game in that first half. Florida Atlantic was up nine. They lead by seven as we start this second half. One of the things, we haven't seen a lot of Davis in the game, and, you know, they're going right to him right away because he allows Andy Kennedy to run more of their sets the way they like to. Lendenberg denied, but not on that second attempt. Seven turnovers in that first half for UAB. They had 15 turnovers in their last game, a loss on the road at SMU Sunday. They need to be able to take care of the ball. Yeah, I love the way this game has been officiated, though. These officials are big-time officials, and they're not calling fouls on action. They're calling fouls or action on contacts. Lindenberg has had a huge game already. He affected that last drive. Davis trying to post up inside, but it's the other Davis, John L., taking it away. He always plays in such control. He goes at his pace. That, that's because he has so much confidence in his ability to handle the basketball that he does not let you speed him up. I mean, he just never looks rushed. Even when he picks up his dribble there, calmly finds his big man in Golden. Four on the shot clock. Turnaround jump for enough of a nylon. That's a big shot, John. That is a big shot because if they can get Golden going and make him a factor to where UAB has to respond to him, it opens up a lot of other things that FAU likes to do. For Golden, just his second field goal. He's got five points and a kick ball. We'll reset the shot clock. Golden is such an important part. You see he takes his time, gets a good look at the rim, and when he's able to do that, he can really create problems for the other team. But what, sometimes he gets rushed because people get up under him. Gaines will challenge Golden, and the floater goes. Quickly the other way is Martin. Gathers himself. Missing, but gets it right back. Florida Atlantic has been all over the boards. 26 rebounds for Florida Atlantic versus 21 for the Blazers. Now you see UAB running their horns action, trying to get the ball inside. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the sets Andy Kennedy likes to run and lets his players play through, and it makes Davis very effective. Look at this oh, in the low post. Hey, now, big guys in golden, and we got a shoving match as Davis throws him to the floor, and officials say, both teams to your bench. It was Golden who got up in the grill at Davis, and Davis said, you don't want this smoke. It was very well done. And it didn't alter the game. Correct. Terry Oglesby, Keith Kimball, Ron Groover. Incredible job by the men in stripes tonight. So Golden now has two personal fouls after getting that tech. It's Boyd open from the wing. And out of bounds was Martin. It'll be UAB ball. Okay, coach, you've been in situations like this. How do you get your team to rally and benefit and take this double te technical situation and turn it into a positive? Well, it's two different ways. I mean, for Andy Kennedy, he's got to get back to being able to get somebody in that low post that he can get the ball to so he can run his sets like that. He needs to get back to running his sets because that's what he's lived with and that's what this team knows. I think for Florida Atlantic, what they have to do is play without Golden. They've got to be able to space the floor, get Carroll going, and they've got to be able to attack the game with space. Lendeboer pulls down the board. Yes, he does. But Lendeboer left it short. A three-point game here in Birmingham. Florida Atlantic. James is down, holding his right ankle. And the officials stop play. Excuse me, he's holding his left ankle. And if you're Eric Gaines, hopefully that young man is going to be okay. He is such a huge part of this team for UAB. Well, he is. Warriors at the Chase Center at Coverage Tips. NBA countdown at 8 Eastern. Coach, so many deals getting done in the NBA. The Knicks making a big trade with the Pistons. People talking about Knicks being a contender now.
It's getting that time of the year, I'm telling you. Sports Center will wrap it up after this one. Everybody wants that chip. <laughs> <laughs> we got a long way to go, though. Christian Coleman rocking the rim. Lindenborg with a great pass that time. I tell you, this young man, John, they use him so many different ways because his skill sets allow them to do that. He can pass, he can shoot it, he can knock down threes, he can drive it. He's very, very versatile. UAB has changed his defense to kind of a sloughing man-to-man, -man, taking away the passing lanes. Lendeborg, he took that one away. His 13th rebound to go along with 13 points. UAB, five of seven from the floor. Make that six of eight to start this second half. They're going inside. It's not a matter now of them running sets, but they're spacing the floor and they're getting the ball inside. This crowd is really getting into it. Davis missing everything. Yaxo Lindenborg, the Juco transfer, is putting his stamp on this game. Lindenborg is certainly doing that. His versatility is really showing because he can get the ball and operate when they don't run necessarily sets for him because of his skill set. They're going right now with the horns action. Explain horns, coach. It's a double high post where one post guy rolls, the other gets it at the elbow and attacks just like that. Coleman works it to perfection. And this place is going bonkers. UAB up three. And they come back now to matchup zone. And there's the steal by Lindeborg. He's going to lead the break. Whose foot did it go <laughs> off? They're going to say off UAB. The Owls rock. Uh oh. This is this is the way UAB likes to play. You see the horns, one post rolls, one post pops. Now you get the isolation and the post drives the basketball and is able to score the ball. And that's when UAB is at their best, when they're able to run their Iverson action or their horns action. Davis looks to take control for Florida Atlantic off the dribble. Golden can't follow, but he'll be fouled. That's the most oh, aggressive. We got him some more words. Things are getting a little chippy here in Birmingham. But that's the most aggressive that Golden has been, and I think he has to wind up doing that because this is turning into a physical game now. The two bigs from UAB are really being aggressive in how they're playing. Coach, you said it early on. There is so much on the line with this game. Florida Atlantic in second place in the conference, UAB in fifth place. You know, John, but it's also bragging rights. I mean, it's respect. I mean, if you walk in and we won the conference, we're going to show we're going to win it again. We're going to walk in your home court and show it. The American Hoop Showcase highlights top conference matchups with enhanced coverage across digital platforms. The next showcase is Memphis and North Texas at 8 Eastern next Thursday exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. If you're an American Athletic Conference fan, you got to have it. Sign up today, ESPNplus.com slash AAC, or you can download the ESPN app. You said at the half, this game just felt like it was going to go down to the wire. How did you know? Just the intensity and the fact that it's not going to be decided on coaches sitting over there is calling set plays because they know the plays. The guys are going to have to read and make the adjustments. We played almost seven minutes here in this second half. UAB was down seven at the half. Ooh, in and out. There's Lendeborg again with the offensive rebound. Gaines left it short. And on the rebound, it was Golden Paul for the over the back. Yeah. This is getting a little physical now, which is not a bad thing. I mean, but, you know, Golden's been pushed around a little bit, stopped from getting to his spots, and now he's got to respond and try to get back to posting up. So Golden with three fouls.
Charles will be replaced by Brennan Laureate. And he is not a fan favorite here in Birmingham. Inside they go to Lindeborg. Fighting off the tee through the contact and he finishes for two more. But getting back on the other end and Laureate will be fouled. What a job by Florida Atlantic to respond. And coach, that's off a made bucket. Well, again, this is when they like to do. They like to get it out and run the basketball and take advantage of that. They've got both their post guys can be tremendous rim runners. So Will Shaver will come into the game for the first time. The 6'10 sophomore out of Birmingham. He's the North Carolina transfer. Lindeborg can come out and play guys on the perimeter. That's part of his ability. They are letting them play here tonight in the American. Games looking to get it inside. They couldn't find Shaver. Again, they're going back now with space. And he's right now, what Andy Kennedy likes to do, he likes to find somebody that he can go at. Here's Vasquez off the bounce. First time, no good. And it's pulled down by Lorian. If you bring it in the post, you better be ready to take contact. There's no free, there's no free lunches in the post area tonight. A four-point lead for the Blazers. It's Davis. Nice pump fake. Gets his own miss. Gets more guys in the air. And Gaines just snatches it. Inside they go to Shaver, but it's taken away. Florida Atlantic with numbers out ahead. And Weatherspoon able to gather himself as UAB lead is down to two. With this lineup right now for Florida Atlantic, they like this lineup. All four guys can handle this basketball. All four guys can make decisions with this basketball. And they do a good job of rebounding, John, for as small as what they are. Now, Lundenberg Borg has really changed that a little bit because he's so much physical in all of them. Gaines will draw the foul. They'll call it on Brian Greenlee. That's his second. It is big boy basketball tonight. UAB up two. Joining us here on ESPN2 alongside the coach, Perry Clark. I'm John Schriffen. It's Florida Atlantic coming here with a seven-game win streak, but they have never won in this building. All time, they are 0 and 7. And you just knew UAB was going to give them a fight tonight. Oh, without question. Give this young man at the foul line a lot of credit. Uh, Mr. Gaines has played a heck of a ball game, guiding his team, getting them in their offensive sets, and defensively being able to change up, which has kept both Martin and Davis off balance in this second half. John L. Davis had 30 points the first time these two teams met. Here's the alley-oop, and Lorient finishes at the rim. That might be the last time we see the 1-3-1. There goes Lindeborg, and he finishes in close. He has been the man tonight. 17 points, 15 rebounds. They've not known how to play him at that elbow right there because he's just been too big and too strong as far as driving the basketball. Oh, what a block by Shaver! The North Carolina transfer who does not get to play much. Will Shaver off the bench. Look at that. Three defenders. Somebody's open. In the corner, Daniel Ortiz. And on the rebound, a strong board by Davis as he's fouled. If you want to win games, you have to challenge at the rim. You can't let people come in and shoot layups. And you see right there, 
saying no at the rim. That's an important part of this UAB defense. And Golden has to come back in because FAU's got to start to establish their dominance at the rim. Well, this Florida Atlantic offense led by John L. Davis and Elijah Martin. Davis has not scored in this second half. Look what they did in the first half combined in the second half. Just two points. The reason being they shut down, UAB has shut down the driving lanes. On the pick and roll, that's another block by Shaver, but look who's there to clean it up, Brandon Weatherspoon. The size and the physicality of UAB, I think, has surprised FAU tonight because there have been no open looks at the basket. Gaines will rise up, and Golden will come down away with it. A two-point lead for the Blazers, under 10 minutes to play in the second half. Here's Boyd on the wing, decides to put it on the deck, but he stepped out of bounds. Great rotation that time from UAB. They see him driving the baseline. He stepped, he, he stepped out a couple times. But that's when that defense, John, is all over you and putting pressure. You're just trying to get away from that pressure. That's the eighth turnover. You know, when we talked to Nick Boyd in shoot-around, he said, we learned a lot about ourselves in the game against Arizona. We knew we could play with the tough teams, but also recently in a tough win against North Texas, we knew we still had it in us to win those nitty-gritty games, games like they're facing tonight against UAB. Well, they're a well-coached team, and they can beat you a lot of different ways. Butter Johnson, what a nickname. <laughs> If you talk about a coach that can go up a play to get his best player a shot, it's Andy Kennedy. There's Nick Boyd with a tough finish. Back and forth they go. We've seen this from the opening tip, coach. And that's what I'm saying. Andy's got him now. He's walking it up. He's making the calls on it just about every play. And he knows who he wants to go after and where he wants the ball to go. He's really good at that. They're trying to go inside with Davis, who's back on the floor with four fouls. A foul on a three-point attempt, and Butta Johnson will get to the free-throw line to shoot three. FAU's going to have to do something to change the pace so that Coach Kennedy can't call plays every time up. What would you suggest as a coach? Pressure. I think pressure makes you get out of what you want to do. I think FAU, they've got to start attacking they've got to try to get some turnovers they got to get some easier baskets they've got to get both martin and davis at the rim more than what they've been so far in this half but now that's not easy no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sitting here saying that that's easy so johnson goes to the free throw line to shoot three his first free throws of the night they can't let this young man get in the rhythm Saturday starts with the college game day crew at 11 a.m. And then our featured matchup, number four, Kansas, hosts number 13, Baylor, in a Big 12 Sonic blockbuster. That's at 6 p.m. Eastern. It kind of feels like every game in the Big 12 is a Sonic blockbuster. <laughs> it's just been that kind of season for that because conference. Because it has been. I mean, you know. <laughs> It's funny, I saw Andy Kennedy was having a conversation with Lindenborg, and he was telling him when you get the ball in the elbow how to drive the basketball. And again, that's what Coach Kennedy does. He's picking how he wants to attack and who he wants to attack through. What do you think of the move of J.B. and Davis back on the floor? Remember, it was around the 1730 mark. He got the double tech, got his fourth foul. But they took the lead afterwards, so it doesn't matter. So the clock started early as the officials will make sure to make the correction. If you're Dusty May, what are you thinking right now? Yeah, I got to figure out a way. They've got Lindenborg on Davis. 
And that has a lot to do with that, where Davis has been stymied a little bit. We got to get him some looks. Martin open from the wing. And Florida Atlantic is 5 for 19 from downtown, shooting 26%. Johnson's had the hot hand caught in the air will give it up. They give it back to him Now inside Davis spinning in the post just discards the defender and they say foul on the floor Davis is really big and strong right there Foul called against Martin his first but Lindenborg right there basket and he has changed the way that FAU has looked at this game and tried to play this game because of his physicality. Coach, I've never been here before, but Bartow Arena, thank you for this treat tonight. This has been a fun one. Six lead changes. And Lendeborg has been the star. There goes Butta Johnson. Oh, that was halfway down. But it's UAP getting the 50-50 balls now. And here comes Martin the other way. He goes one on three. Finds some help in Gaffney who will launch it. And bang! That's what, that's what FAU need. They need a couple of easy baskets. You've been with me long enough. I'm a big believer in easy baskets. So the defense has to turn it up. They got to get some transition. They got to get some easy baskets. And right now, FAU has got to wear the heart of a champion. With, every, with everything UAB has thrown at him, FAU has not panicked. And on the drive, Vasquez will be fouled and go to the free throw line. When you talk about this FAU program, this is a perfect example. Coming up with a steal. Martin's a hit of the pack, but what does he do? He looks for a teammate to get a better shot. What does the teammate do? Say thank you and knock down a three. Coach, that's what got FAU to the Final Four last year. It wasn't one star. It was everyone playing together as a team. And when they've had their lulls, they've had to remind each other. That's what we did last year. Let's get back to that. And that's why you have to like this ball club. I mean, they have not changed. They are very humble. They work real hard. And I think Dusty has really stepped up and kept this group together and focused because he's been so humble and focused. Which is not an easy thing to do. No, no. With all the national attention the Owls have received, it can change some people. Well, well, yeah, but you have to change. I mean, you know, what's expected of them has changed. The spotlight on them has changed. So you have to change, but you have to use that change in a positive manner. A foul on the three-point attempt as Boyd will be fouled by Lendeborg. That's his third. You know, John, people always say, don't change, don't change. When you grow, you have to change. You, you get a better position. You get more expectation. All that is part of change. That's not bad. Sorry, it was not on the three-point attempt. It was on the floor. Davis has not scored in the second half. Ten points in the first. Lundeborg is just he's swamping him with his side. He's not able to get to clear the field around. And then he came over and challenged Boyd. A five-point lead for the Blazers as we approach six minutes to play in the second half. They're running the zipper action right now to get an isolation. What is zipper, coach? A zipper is where a guard comes off a post guy to the elbow and he looks to dump it down. There's the elbow, the shot off the mark by Vasquez. Inside they go, seven foot one Golden, one on one against Davis. They've got a history here tonight, and it's Davis stripping the ball away. Gaines inside. I don't know how that shot went in by Vasquez. Largest lead of the game for UAP. I told you at the beginning, Vasquez is the wild card because he loves to attack the basket. Davis with the answer, John L. Davis <laughs> calmly sinks the three. And how about this? The officials have blown a whistle. They've told Golden and Davis, that's it. Cut it out. No more between the two of you. Well, here's the thing, okay? Golden is trying... He, 
Davis is not going for a pump fake, so he's holding his ground. So now Golden is trying to jump over him, and he hasn't had success in doing that. He just, Golden has to go with his initial move and just shoot the basketball. I'm telling you, folks, if you want good basketball, check out the American every night. <laughs> we got some bangers. Here goes Gaines, pushing off, and the kiss off the glass. Oh, he said he's too small. <laughs> Gaines, you're only 165, so you might want to ease up on that one. There goes Gaffney with the response. Back and forth we go. You having fun tonight, Coach? A lot of it. This has yeah. been incredible. I'm so impressed with Gaines and how he's managed this game. There goes Gaines with a crossover. Now he leans in. But a free throw jumper short. Davison Golden battling. Ball on the floor. And a jump ball. And Davison Golden are still going at each other. Yeah, not backing down one bit. You know what's interesting? Dusty May told us in shoot around today. He said, you know, this has never really been a rivalry because Florida Atlantic for years hasn't won in this game. Now that we're starting to win, we are developing a rivalry with this UAB team. And here in the American, these two are going to go at it for some time. Watch games take you in the post area, goes over top of you, scores. He said, you're too little, son. You're too little. Gaines was a big time recruit coming out in the college and he has really stepped up and has done the things that Andy Kennedy has wanted him to do. His leadership in running this show offensively and defensively has been really good. Full court press, it's broken easily by the Owls. We got a lot of basketball to play. The entire student section wearing all black is on their feet right now. Davis penetrating, missing with a left, and it's Lendeborg again, his 18th rebound. You like this by UAB slowing it down? Oh, without question, because I think this is where Andy Kennedy at his best, where he gets there to call plays and to attack the defense the way he wants it attacked. There goes Lendeborg, takes the contact, no call, tipped around, and it's Gaffney coming away with it. A three-point lead for the Blazers. They've got to find a way to get Davis and Martin going. There goes Davis on Davis. And if that's JV and Davis, fine. that would be his fifth and final foul. He played a long time, three minutes plus here in the second half. But Lindeborg has been the difference. Let's not mis mistake that. He's been the most dominant inside player uh, for both teams tonight, both offensively and defensively. He's picked up and he's played Davis and he's shut him down. He's been able to out-rebound uh, the front line so far in the second half of uh, FAU. So they've got to do something with Lindeborg, else it's going to be a hard finish for FAU. So Davis knocks down the front end of a one and one. You know, even though Davis hasn't put up the points here tonight, that's his 14th, he still finds a way to make a difference. He's got seven rebounds, four assists, and Dusty May has challenged him. He said, there are going to be nights like tonight where the defense is going to take you out. How can you still stay involved in the offense? Without question, he's got to do that. Martin's got to step up. Martin is the guy right now that I'm looking in the last three minutes to put on that cape and to show how what, what type of quality player he is. There goes Lendeborg, the one one on one against Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon standing his ground, backing him up, cutting his Johnson, and he loses it. Florida Atlantic can take the lead with a bucket. Weatherspoon corner. And there's John L. Davis keeping it alive, hanging, no call. And Lendeborg was there on the D. A one-point lead for the Blazers under three minutes to play in the second half. This is one of those games where players make the difference. A play makes a difference, not a play set. 
because these guys, plays are really well guarded. Ball tipped around, and there's the steal for Weatherspoon. Davis has it one on one against Gaines. He went down, and a block is called against UAB. It, it looked like Gaines was still moving. For Gaines, that's just his second personal. Coach, let's take another look at it. Yeah. Looks like he's still moving. So that would not be a popular opinion right now, but it looked like he was still moving. He makes the front end of the one and one in their last meeting on January 14th. 30 points, five of six from downtown. Davis. Just one for five from downtown tonight, but he's still a factor. First lead for Florida Atlantic since they were up one four minutes into this second half. Don't forget Johnson right now. They call him money for a reason. Here's Gaines being guarded by Davis. 10 on the shot clock, Gaines caught in the air. He finds Coleman in traffic, that's swatted by Golden. And a foul on the rebound against Florida Atlantic. They give it to Elijah Martin, that's his third personal. You know the difference is the way UAB has attacked the glass and the way they've held with the rebounding. I don't think I've seen anybody dominate late in the game rebounding, especially the offensive glass against Florida Atlanta. So a one and one for Vasquez. That, that young man can really score the ball. Um, he came in known as a shooter, and because of the makeup of this team, He's taking his game and drives the ball a lot better now, but he really attacks the basket and gets the defense to collapse. Well, you know why? <laughs> He's a guard from New York City. We got Queens, New York in the house, and Vasquez misses the second. All tied at 65 apiece. Davis with the blow by. And the floater is good for Golden. Vlad Golden with eight points, six rebounds. They're trying to get Johnson to look off the high ball screen. Now it's Gaines. No call. Vasquez is on the spot. We're tied again at 67. And a quick timeout by Andy Kennedy and UAB. We will step aside and come on back to Birmingham. We got a good one. I mean, uh, Vasquez is the guy that comes up with it. And I told you he's the wild card because he is so versatile and does so many different things. Vasquez has 11 points, four rebounds tonight. 1-3-1, one, one. but it doesn't change. Even out of the 1-3-1, one, one, they've got to find a way to get some penetration. Bartow Arena is on their feet. Under a minute to play. Florida Atlantic has won seven in a row, trying to survive here in Birmingham. Here's Davis leaning in, no whistle, Davis gets it back. Four on the shot clock, he needs help. Gaffney has to hoist it! And the rebound goes to Coleman. Eight second differential between shot and game clock, and a timeout, UAB, Andy Kennedy wants to talk it over. Coach, we are going to stay here in Birmingham. Take us into this UAB huddle. What is Andy Kennedy telling his team? What he's saying right now is... UAB in fifth place needs this win to stay in this top group here in the American Conference. Yeah. The, when we started this, it seems like days ago, I talked about Gaines being the critical piece, and he's the critical piece here because he's the guy that has to read the defense to figure out where the ball needs to go. Johnson will inbound. At what point on the shot clock does UAB go? At, a, at about 10. Here we right are at now. 10. 
Gaines has the ISO on Gaffney, sizing up his man. He's dancing with it, rising up, and it's Coleman tracking it down. Shot clock turned off, puts it up, off the mark. Five seconds to play. Gaffney crosses half court, throws it up, and we go to overtime. Wow. Golden had a chance, but we keep playing here in Birmingham. Great. Great defense. Really the story has been the Juco transfer. Yaxel Lendeborg. He averages 12 and 9 and a half. He has played like a man tonight, and he's played like a man defensively. I mean, Martin and Davis have not been major factors like they normally are. Gaffney, get that out of here. He gets it back. Davis with 10 on the shot clock. Guarded by Johnson. Oh, nice little head fake. Puts it up at the rim. No good. Davis with his own miss. That stripped away. Somehow finds it back. Rolls off the rim. Wild sequence. But of course, it's Lendeborg. And that is a career high 19 rebounds for that young man. Davis has so many opportunities that time. When he looks back at that sequence, he's going to be very disappointed. A reach-in foul called against Martin. That'll be his fourth personal. The refs have certainly let them play, but when you cross the line, they're there to say, uh-uh, oh, that's it. Without question, and Martin tried to make a steal on that play. Vas I mean, Vasquez has just been too tough offensively with the basketball. When he's got it, he's driven it. He's taken advantage of his situation. And that's when I talk about the wild card. He does so many things that you can't take them all away. You saw the graphic on the screen. Florida Atlantic all time, 0 and 7 in here, this gym, Bartow Arena. I know as a former coach, you don't think there's anything to that, but sometimes there's just those places you just don't like to hear about them because then your players start questioning it all. You just come out and play the game for tonight. Vasquez gives UAB a two-point lead. Golden rolls to the rim, but he's guarded by Coleman. Now they get it inside of the big fella, and he can't finish. Coleman finds the guard, and they slow it down with Eric Gaines. The physicality UAB has shown inside has really disrupted Florida Atlantic and how they like to play both on their drives and their post stuff the physicality is really taking them out of the things that they like to do You see Andy Kennedy on the side he knows exactly where he wants to get the shot and what he wants run There's a steal Davis one-on-one -on -one against Coleman and he backs it out John L. Davis, always in control, knows what he wants to do. Driving baseline, finds his big man, Golden, and he misses another bunny. Florida Atlantic, 0 for 5 to start this overtime. A deep two. Christian Coleman off the bench. Dustin's going to have to take a timeout. He's going to have to take a timeout. Right now, John, he's trying to calm him down. They've had so many easy opportunities that hasn't fallen. He doesn't want them to get frustrated. So he's going to go to that toughness in their DNA that they're showing. All right, so let's see what Dusty May drew up in that last timeout. As he finds Florida Atlantic down by four here in overtime. Vasquez tips it out of bounds. 21 on the shot clock for the Owls. The length of this UAB team is creating problems for FAU in their passing lanes. And right now they're really flying around. Florida Atlantic dating back to regulation. 0 for their last seven from the floor. They're in their 1-3-1. One, one. They're trying to spread them out. Boyd is open on the wing. They go inside of the big man, Golden. Inside, outside. Gaffney can't make it pay. They got the look. 
They did a great job of reversing the ball, getting the defense to collapse, to get a wide open shot up top. Now this is where Gaines is really good. He will not, he very rarely will turn it over. So he's gonna pace the game to get the shot that they want. Coleman hit the last jumper inside. He goes, and the scoop shot is good over Golden. Two minutes to play in overtime. Martin, pump fake. Boyd from the corner, nothing but nylon. Boyd, his first three comes at a big time for Florida Atlantic. Defensively, they're going to have to come up with a stop. They've got Davis on Lindenberg. Gain showing patience, tries to find Lindenborg, and he kicks out to Coleman. Six on the shot clock for the Blazers. Driving on Golden, and it's Lindenborg, his 20th rebound. Who is this young He's man? He's been a man child tonight. He's been a man child. They're trying to get Andy off the court. One minute to play in Birmingham. What do you want to see here? Shot clock winding down. It's at two. Gains off of one foot. And it's Lindeborg again keeps it alive. They have just been dominated on the glass. FAU has, has been out rebounded. The post guys have really done a job. 21 rebounds for Yaxel Lindeborg. Johnson. UAB has just done a tremendous job. Coleman has come in and he stepped up and he's done a workman job on the rebounding and shot blocking and has taken away Golden in the inside game of FAU. Whether or not it's passing or driving, they've eliminated the inside game. Here comes John L. Davis, our game summary. Seven ties, eight lead changes. Davis had to kick it out to Morton. He'll rise up with a hand in his face. Off the mark, and it's out of bounds off the Blazers. So Florida Atlantic has another chance down by six. John, do you think the conference tournament is going to be wild? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> They've got to get some sort of quick hitter. Here's Gaffney, cut off by Gaines. Kick out, Martin, and the Owls are not done yet. No. A time when I catch it, I don't just take it and put it on the floor because FAU is going to be swatting at the ball. They're going for the steal. Gaines is trapped, and Andy Kennedy will use the final timeout for UAB. 10.7 seconds here in overtime. You know, you always say do not has been, I think, the difference in this ball game. And Andy was just asking, can he run? And the referee said, no, you can't run. Now, UAB is out of timeouts. They cannot run the baseline. So Vasquez to inbound. Here's Gaines. They go for the steal, but a foul is called on Davis. It's always dangerous when you come back to that baseline and try to make that pass. Because with the steal, you're setting up the offense. So Eric Gaines will go to the free throw line where he's a perfect four for four tonight. A 70% free throw shooter on the season. So a one and one for Gaines. If he misses, Florida Atlantic down three. And he missed it! Here we go! Seven seconds of play. John L. Davis looking for the tie. Rising up, missing. Boyd finds the three-point line. It's over! And UAB has pulled it off in overtime! Blazers are 8-0 here on their home floor against Florida Atlantic.